ओके सो वेलकम एवरी वन वंस अगेन फर्स्ट थिंग फर्स्ट इफ आई कैन टेल यू एज यस्टरडे ऑल्सो आई हैव टोल्ड यू दैट आई एम इन कॉन्स्टेंट टच विद विद द चैट बॉक्स सो इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन इन बिटवीन वेन वी आर डिस्कसिंग द स्टफ यू कैन लेट मी नो वी विल ट्राई टू एड्रेस द क्वेश्चन एज सोन एज दे कम इन सो देर आफ्टर आई थिंक वी कैन actually uh, discuss uh, as we have done yesterday i have had feedback of students yesterday so it seems that uh, uh, it has worked out and the model is working good so let's start <coughs> yesterday we have done uh, pricing and uh, today uh, we will talk of channel management uh, so this is uh, if you will talk by the syllabus that we are having we are running currently into the third unit and this is part of our uh, third unit discussion so uh, let us talk of this now let me bring you to the slides okay so now uh, channel management as you would all know uh, is actually relating to the fourth p uh, of uh, marketing mix we have already talked about uh, three p's uh, we have talked about product uh, we have talked about price we have talked about promotion we have spent quite some time in discussing that uh, in that line today we will talk of place uh, which is the distribution uh, which is the channel which is the place so these are the different names you know uh, which are uh, given to it so you can call it as channel you can call it as distribution channel you can call it as place uh these all are the names which are uh, given to it so uh, if you would look at it uh, this is how um, it is primarily defined what is uh, distribution channel as you would all know uh, no rocket science in this it is a set of interdependent organizations involved in the process of making a product or service available for use or consumption by the consumer or business user so what primarily this uh, thing is actually letting us know is uh, distribution channel is all about all those people who are in between the end consumer and a business or 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 a manufacturer so a manufacturer has produced something now it is to be made available to the end consumer also so whosoever comes in between uh they are actually part of our distribution channel and all of them are important so just to put it in perspective now for example as we have been discussing uh if we will talk of say the fmcg giants like hul and uh, png so they have clnfs which are clearing and forwarding agents so these clearing and forwarding agents then supply it to the distributors and then the distributors from distributors to retailers and from the retailers to consumers so this is how this channel works in so these are uh, organizations which are involved in between uh, and in the transition uh, one thing that you would look at in this definition is which is worth discussing before we go ahead is uh, it is actually called as the set of interdependent uh, you know interdependent organizations now this word is actually very important to understand the essence of the distribution channel because uh, the word interdependent means that all of them are dependent on each other uh, we 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 do this in supply chain management and we talk of it in the sense that supply chain management is not an independent exercise we do not look at supply chain as to be uh, uh, as to be a mechanism where a retailer is not conscious and is not carry about his distributor and the distributor is not carry about his retailer and um, from wherever he is getting his raw material so uh, everyone has to think about everyone and that is why you look at it as an interdependent system in fact uh, in our production class i have shared with those four students who are there that uh, we uh, actually uh, can talk of uh, this channel management to be so important that at any given point of time uh, uh, on roads when the when the goods are being transported when they are ready to be transported to the point wherein they are made available to the consumer in transition you can have an inventory of anywhere between 100 days so what does it mean is 
that if you are talking of say pepsodent as a product which is now manufactured and uh, it has actually gone off the marketing or gone off from the dispatch center of HUL and it is now on trucks. So the trucks who would be plying onto the roads of our country carrying pepsodent in order to make them available either to a distributor or either to a uh, a retailer uh, and from retailer to a consumer now that can be anywhere between 100 days of inventory so that would mean that in your country in our country if you feel hypothetically that one lakh pepsodents are being consumed in a day or are being used in a day so you multiply it with 100 so that many pepsodents would be there onto the roads as as as, as per one estimate and this paper, uh, the reference that I'm giving to you was actually published in MIT Sloan Review. So Massachusetts Institute of Technology Sloan Review, which is one of the most reputed, uh, you know, uh, institution in the world. So th that is why it is so important. If you, we can manage this channel well, uh, we can actually, uh, you know, make our consumers to be uh, to be more uh, happy with our uh, services, and uh, it is not only about making them happy, but it is about uh, to uh, gather the data also. So the channel doesn't work only in one way, wherein the product is being supplied from a manufacturer to a consumer, but it is also about this channel is utilized to get the feedback of the consumer from the bottom to the top. So it has to work both ways. Right. So with this, I think, uh, let us look at uh, why why it is uh, another way, another angle of looking at it, why it is so important. Now imagine uh, Hindustan uh, Liver, uh, which is a company in India, who is actually the parent company of Lifebuoy. Uh, the Lifebuoy as a product is going to the villages, uh, all across the villages in India. If you would go to the 2011 census, you will find that census talks about that there are more than five lakh villages in India, right? So uh, this this product is meant for all of these villages, and so all of the people who are living in all these villages would uh, are the potential uh, target customers of Lifebuoy. So if Hindustan Liver has to make this product available to each and every village in India, now they are more than five lakh. So can you think of Hindustan Unilever doing it all by themselves? Can they set up 5 lakh offices across the country so that they can reach uh, to all the villages separately? The company owned uh, the retail shops, uh, maybe uh, we have a very clear answer to this that uh, there is no company who is existing under the sun who can actually reach to each potential customers of his or her on its own so uh, they would they would no one does it even the governments uh, even the census is done once in 10 years so that is keeping in mind the amount of resources and the money that is required to reach out to these people so companies cannot think of doing it so the no company in this world would have those resources to reach to every potential customers by themselves so when you uh, actually uh, kind of face this that is why it is called as an issue you know uh, so when you face such things, you have to take the help of these uh, channel partners. So um, it is an essentiality today wherein you would require the help of uh, distributors, retailers or the clearing and forwarding agents or the various layers in between. And in the beginning of this talk, we were talking of interdependent organizations. So we require those organizations. Without them, we may not be able to reach our potential target customers. Specifically, if you are into an FMCG industry, uh, that's important for you to take help of these distributors and retailers and all. So that is why we need to take care of these retailers and distributors and the interdependent organizations in between. Now, one thing that we need to look at when we cannot uh, do the job without them, but when we take them along, uh, we do not have full control over them. And when we do not have full control over them, then that is where the, you know, the problem might arise. And uh, to manage this all is all about the channel management, you know, to, to, to work it flawlessly, to work it good so that the distributors are happy, retailers are happy, customer is happy, we are not falling short of stock. So all those things uh, are to be taken care of when we are talking of this. Now, uh, how does this uh, actually, uh, you know, solve the problems for marketer not to reach to five lakh villages individually and the company themselves are not reaching to all those people? 
Uh, now look at this. Uh, this is a slide which maybe actually is letting us know that how we are reducing the number of transactions that we as a manufacturer has to do to reach to a consumer if we are taking help of a uh, retailer. Now look at this scenario. Here uh, this is manufacturer uh, and he has to reach uh, to this group of customers, uh, to this group of customers, to this group of customers also. So, so when, when you do not have anyone in between, you have to reach individually to all of them, right? Uh, but when you have a store or a distributor or a retailer in between, so now you are reaching to this store. Uh, this manufacturer also reaching to this store. This is also reaching to this store. And now this store is then, you know, kind of making the products available to the various stakeholders. So you as a company are now only uh, dealing with this fellow. And hence, uh, it reduces the number of channel transactions. So this makes a lot of sense because if you would see, uh, we are actually looking at a lot of costs being involved into uh, the distribution. Uh, you would not be surprised with it to know that uh, this is one of those uh, concepts in marketing which has found the acceptance of the highest order of gravity so much so that there are courses available on to supply chain management so you might find MBA in supply chain management so that is that important you do not have MBA in pricing uh, you do not have MBA in some other thing, but MBA in supply chain management. So that speaks of how important it is. There is a lot of math involved. There is a lot of permutations, a lot of combinations. Um, your OR uh, algorithms, your OR uh, permutations and combinations, they all are actually taken into consideration when you are trying to solve the channel management issues and channel management problems. So in the end, what you are doing, your ideology, your idea is to reduce the number of transactions and why you are doing that is so that you can reduce the, uh, the, the cost that you are incurring in making the product available from your point to the consumer's point. So this is uh, what essentially we actually do when we are talking of channel management. Now uh, let us look at uh, the levels and this is what we call is the levels in, uh, in the channel management. Uh, no rocket science into this we just need to know when you uh, as a manufacturer directly talking to a consumer this is called a zero level channel because there is no one in between so this is zero when you have one distributor in between or a retailer in between or whosoever only one interdependent organization between a manufacturer and a consumer you talk it one level channel when you have two you make it two when you have more than two then you talk of more than two so the level of channels actually depends upon how many people are in between you and your consumers right so this is how we kind of you know try to look at it now uh, the, this more the heavy your channel is more busy your channel is more uh, uh, more number of uh, you know your uh, more number of intermediaries in between, interdependent uh, organizations in between, more uh, complexity comes into the channel management, right? So uh, this is how, you know, kind of we look at it. Okay. So uh, um, Sandeep says distributors like Safe Express, yes, if they are into, uh, if they are into that mechanism wherein they are taking the stuff from the manufacturer and giving it to the consumers and are one of the interdependent uh, organizations between then you call them as distributors. In fact, when you would look at uh, the changing scenario of uh, channel management, you would invariably realize that what these people are doing, uh, the Flipkart, uh, the eBay, the Amazon, this is, uh, this is a mammoth change that is taking place in the channel management nowadays. In, you are eliminating the cost of retailers, you are eliminating the cost of distributors. Even these people do not uh, maintain their own, uh, own, own storage houses also. They, whenever I or you make an order onto the flip card, so they would just make it, uh, you know, supply it, uh, supply the order information to the concerned supplier and they would just, you know, kind of try to give it to them. So they are only managing this channel, 
and uh, so you would find the stuff to be uh, comparatively cheaper onto the online platforms because they are saving onto the cost of the distribution and the margin cost to the distributors and the retailers all so in times we have been discussing it in class also uh, we if there is one p uh, into the entire marketing management mix which is going to see a mammoth change in times to come it is going to be the channel it is going to be the place it is going to be the distribution it is going to be the supply chain management this is the p which will witness a huge amount of change uh, you remember i have given this example to you in class also uh, we are sitting in times when maybe uh, you might visualize, you might think, uh, or you might echo in your brain thought that day will come when you will book your 50 lakh rupees car using an online distributor like Amway or like, uh, like Flipkart or like uh, eBay. So you are booking your car and then the consumer, then the delivery boy comes to you and says, Hi sir, this is your car or Hi madam, this is your car. So th that is what we are visualizing and um, for those who feel that no this is not happening any sooner uh, we have already this example when the Ford uh, has launched their uh, elevated eco sport last year uh, they the first hundred bookings of Figo uh, so th this Ford eco sport has happened with or using uh, the online mechanisms only so the consumers the, the have not seen the car in actuality but they ordered it online and the car was delivered to them so this is what you you know we are going to see and when that happens we uh, actually would look at that the entire theories entire conflict management uh, mechanisms would also end up uh, in going through reshuffling and that is why this is one of the most uh, you know of fragile flexible concepts that uh, would see a lot of change a lot of fuming in times to come Okay, so uh, now uh, there are some, uh, you know, functions, there are some uh, work which uh, distribution channel or which the interdependent organizations in between are expected to do. You remember when uh, we were discussing uh, that the channel is not only meant to supply the goods from the manufacturer to a consumer. Now we also talk of uh, the channels are tasked to give the information back also. Uh, from the consumer to the manufacturer so that is where we say that there are multiple functions that the channels are responsible for so they are not only there is not only one way traffic but there is a two way uh, interaction that is taking place and that is where uh, you can actually use your channels uh, to look at the other things also which otherwise would have costed you um, heaven uh, so what, what all the distribution channels can do for you, they can provide you information, they can communicate to the consumers and also communicate back to you whatever the consumers want to tell you. They, they are used by the companies to negotiate with the customers, they negotiate, they are used to take orders. Uh, they also uh, you know um, you also finance them and they also help it so we will talk of uh, you know VMS uh, wherein we are not treating our uh, our our channel partners as to be the independent set of organizations responsible for their own profits in isolation but we treat them as to be part of our organization itself so when you treat them as part of your organization so at times you also feed uh, feed them with money if they require it so financing also you know they, they, it is like this that you are talking financing and it is also like this that these retailers these channels partners also uh, gives the financing uh, possibility to the consumer also so today you see you go to a retailer and he would say 0% down payment on phone and you take it back so they are also increasing uh, increasing the uh, increasing the reach to the consumers by providing such facilities so the risk taking uh, these are the people who are taking risk for you to understand this well we have this case of boeing 737 uh, dreamliner uh, which actually tells us that how the risk was spread across a lot of distributors of it uh, in fact this plane was made by the by the suppliers and the suppliers have actually invested a lot into it so when uh, this plane was being manufactured by the Boeing so its engine was coming from maybe say Rolls-Royce and then Rolls-Royce was not given upfront payment for that matter but uh, it was kind of you know uh, the mechanism working between these two organizations wherein they say that the more you sell the more you take uh, the more the Boeing sells, the more money the Rolls-Royce takes. So they are actually taking the risk by supplying these parts to this uh, to this 
uh, to this company because if this company do well then only they get their thing back so this is risk taking capability also so in very very heavy heavy amount in products you also use them to distribute and to spread the risk which is such a wonderful thing to happen physical distribution they do needless to say they actually take care of payments they transfer the goods so maybe the list is not exhaustive but uh, this is that complete circle that we are talking now and you can then add on other things also so today you use them to brand yourself which is not currently there into this list because it has become a big thing that uh, the, the the big retailers who are having a lot of footfalls lot of eyeballs onto their uh, retail outlets they would be approached by the companies to display their logo they would be approached by these companies to have their hoarding on to the top of their face so when this is happening this actually is like uh, when uh, you are actually trying to uh, look at this perspective of channel so we are not only talking uh, the channels to be performing these functions which are presently there on to your slide but we also talk of that there are a lot many things which could potentially be done using the channel members right and uh, that is that is what the innovation in channel management also is about if you can use your retailers to speak for you if you can use your distributors to speak for you this is how the innovation can work out now uh, let us talk of some uh, decisions which uh, we have to take while we are uh, designing our channels so designing the channels would mean that how many intermediaries should be there in between who should be these intermediaries uh, so for that we have to take certain decisions and uh, your text speaks of these four decisions so the number one is analyzing customers desired service output levels so what is it that the consumer desire as a uh, as an output from the retailer so that is what we will uh, we will have some time being spent on this establishing objectives and constraints uh, so what are your objectives when you are trying to create a channel uh, and what are your uh, things that you need to keep in mind which are which can be your constraints uh, then you have uh, major channel alternatives what are the channel alternatives that you have and then you have uh, the evaluation of these channel alternatives and then you can kind of you know decide uh, which channel alternative to be used coming on to the first point analyzing the customer desired service now look at this will not the lot size change your decision of who should be chosen for your uh, for your channel and how many intermediaries should be there in between now for example uh, a maruti if you are a maruti company if you will talk of the purchase of air conditioners so a maruti company would purchase 100 air conditioners maybe in one go because they are industrial purchasers whereas a household would only buy one air conditioner so the lot size now can you imagine the same distribution channel the same interdependent organizations to be working for maruti distribution and for the household distribution the answer may be no so the lot size depends when there are heavy lot sizes uh, uh, are used then you have to choose the channels accordingly when you have uh, smaller lot sizes then you can actually think of the uh, different channel partners who actually are made and who are actually are known for such things so this is another example uh, people supply uh, people supply the thing so if you are a retailer uh, then you are actually supplying the carrots of Pepsi. You are being supplied carrots of Pepsi, whereas the consumer is only consuming one Pepsi. So uh, this is what the shopkeeper is providing. So breaking the product in assortments, uh, at what level the assortments will be broken up? That, that is also uh, something which actually deals with the lot size. So if at initial level when the product is being dispatched from the uh, manufacturing, uh, the breaking of assortments is taking place, then accordingly we have to look at the things if uh, you have to look at uh, that now the assortment is not being broken up till it reaches the consumer then you have to kind of you know look at it that way so in case of industrial purchase you do not see the breaking in assortments uh, till the product reaches to the end consumer so end consumer in that case would be say the maruti when they are buying air conditioners Waiting time is also important. Uh, 
you do not want uh, your newspaper to come next day uh, so you do not want the newspaper for 19th of march to be delivered on 20th of march so this this is important will you wait for the newspaper till evening no you will not wait would you would you wait for your daily products to reach to the next day you do not wait so when you need the fast delivery uh, then you need fast delivery channels also so that depends upon the type of industry you are in that depends upon the type of product you are in all those things are then combined together and that actually has to be playing a role while you are deciding your channels very important to look at it so as we have been doing it uh, since ages since the time we have started discussing marketing that no decision is taken in isolation so everything is kind of you know interwoven with each other so the place is not independent place is dependent upon to the product so if the product is perishable then the channel which is the p to be used for this product has to be accordingly so we have already talked about the marketing mix and the consistency in marketing mix so the type of product you have the type of channel also you need to have if there is kind of an inconsistency between these things then we are talking of this marketing mix going bad and the consumers either they would not have the product in time or they would have the product at a time when they do not need it so when uh, you provide the product when it is not required then you are actually have lost your consumers and have lost your market so you don't want this to happen so when you don't want this to happen uh, then you think of that yes uh, i have to look at uh, the, the the time of delivery how fast the need the goods to be delivered to the consumer that also becomes important okay so uh, then we have uh, special convenience uh, so uh, this is this is actually dealing with uh, the degree to which the marketing channels makes it easy for consumer to purchase a product special is the space uh, you know in contemporary times we are talking of uh, you know not the physical space but we are talking of the uh, digital space so we have moved from the market place to market space and uh, this is from where the word special is coming up so the market place to market space so this is ms so this this is actually possible because of this digitalization uh, and that is from where the word you know can be looked at and can be understood and can be taken as a rule so that it can be remembered without having much of the trouble in this so uh, the special convenience would mean that the consumers should be uh, at ease when they are accessing their products so if you would remember when we were doing the shift from 4p's to 4c's to 4a's so for the place we were talking of accessibility the jagdish said the a that he has given for this is accessibility so the accessibility would mean uh, that the product is accessible to you so that that is more important rather than uh, rather than talking of it like that you uh, just are blindly making the product available no where it is accessible you know, for the consumer right so that is more important so the place is now being talked as the accessibility so you as a company have to take whether you need to have 10 dealers in, in the towns of the specific category or you would like to have the two dealers as the honda is doing right so maruti obviously is offering more special convenience than honda and the hence the repair and search cost of maruti is lower in fact if you would look at maruti as a company they have actually taken this thing the special convenience as to be one of their usps so uh, usp is unique selling proposition so uh, you would have come across multiple people who would have been talking like this that because uh, i cannot have uh, anyone who would understand the mechanics of Maru mechanics of the other brands uh, other than Maruti, so I would not invest into the other things because what if the car breaks down at a place where there is no uh, one who can understand the mechanism? So I will be in trouble. So uh, better go to Maruti. I think you would also remember uh, you would also remember that uh, the Maruti has come up with this entire campaign which says wherever you go you will have a Maruti. Uh, workshop available so that special convenience is also become important i would spend one or two more minutes on to this that uh, the, this special convenience uh, today it is seeing uh, a mammoth change happening you know so the entire concept of making the product accessible to the consumer maybe is losing its charm because of uh, this digital revolution that has taken place 
So a while ago I was talking to you that uh, this uh, Ford EcoSport is being sold using online channels. Uh, the things are being delivered at your doorstep. So irrespective of where do you have your distribution thing, that is not mattering now because anyway you you don't give a heed whether the, this place where from the product is dispatched is 10 kilometers or 10 miles away from me or it is 20 miles away from me as long as it is reaching to my doorsteps so that is why you know the special convenience something on which the maruti has been kind of emphasizing on they might need to you know kind of rethink onto these scenarios but yet we have some time to go so there is some water to be flown into the system before the time comes when even the high volume products like cars also speaks of this uh, uh, this online delivery and online booking and online order taking right so this is how also we need to look at the special convenience so this is something which is now becoming a little troublesome now there are some arguments to keep making rounds which speaks of that does it make sense for the high level products to be delivered using the online delivery mechanisms i have already talked about this uh, uh, sooner or later it is going to happen then uh, the product variety uh, that also would decide what type of channel should you choose uh, if a consumer is looking for more choice uh, you have to have more variety into the product and because consumers prefer it they want to have more options and though this is another story we can spend a lot of time on to this that this availability of various options has actually brought the trouble to the consumers when it comes on to choosing a product out of the so many available options so uh, this also you know kind of uh, kind of decide and kind of play a role when uh, you would like to see that which channel should i choose so all those things now these things that we are discussing now is actually uh, you know uh, something which we have to consider as to be the changing environment in which the channel is to be managed when we were doing pricing yesterday we were talking of some uh, the, the contemporary things which are happening when we are discussing the pricing when we are fixing the pricing when we are thinking of fixing the pricing for any product or brand we need to take care of those things so similarly when we are choosing the channels taking the channel decisions i hope all those things needs to be taken care of another thing is that the service backup uh, service backup is add on services uh, that you provide you provide a credit you provide delivery at home you provide installation you provide repairs uh, these all things are also you know impacting influencing the channels that you would choose you would have noticed it happening but you would have never gone behind the curtain and to realize that why is actually like this uh, you would have seen when you would have been shopping onto Flipkart, they would say that the COD is not available at this location of yours which you have chosen, please change your PIN code. So that is where this add-on service of say maybe the credit uh, or whatever, whatever, maybe it is not available to you because the channel that you have devised for the delivery to this location is not actually kind of you know making this to happen. So is uh, are these add-on services being provided by the channel uh, or are they important to you as a manufacturer? So you actually have to take a call on this and then uh, you know uh, you have to choose the channel accordingly keeping in mind that higher the service backup higher the add-ons you will be providing to the consumer greater the work your channel need to do and greater the investment that also you need to make onto the channel and greater the trust that you need to show to your channel and greater the influence that your channel uh, working has on the satisfaction level of your services okay now uh, having uh, talked about that uh, uh, the desired output level of services let us talk of the another uh, decision that you need to take uh, when it comes onto the channels uh, how many intermediaries uh, we have looked at the zero level two level one level three level you can keep on increasing number of levels in between um, but uh, when you say uh, intermediaries in fact you can actually have it into the three umbrellas and these umbrellas could be exclusive selective and intensive uh, what are these terms these terms are plain english words they are explaining it uh, by itself what does it mean exclusive distribution would mean a company themselves are exclusively distributing their products to the consumers so they do not want to have any intermediary in between so you might talk of a zero level channel uh, none, no one in between company have their own exclusive showroom so 
uh, that is something which is called as exclusive distribution but uh, that depends upon the type of industry that you are serving in not every industry can afford to have exclusive distribution the example we have already took of HUL it cannot make its exclusive distribution available to the five lakh odd villages in our country so you have to take the help of uh, some other retailers the mom and pop stores the khoka walas and all selective distribution uh, you are doing this thing also and um, you are being a little selective and you are not present everywhere but you are kind of you know present at some selected places so that is selective distribution so you would not find a ford showroom at every place but you have uh, it at some selected places so that is your selective distribution that 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 the showroom may not be owned by the company itself so that is a selective distribution intensive distribution is you are in the race of making your product available at every tom dick and harry location so you say uh, what if it is a what if it is b till z i have to be present everywhere so whosoever can play a role into this mechanism they would be member of my channel management so i would make my product available through these people also so the fmcg goods would uh, do and adopt this in intensive distribution channel but again when you would look at all these three things you would invariably realize that everything has its own positives and everything has its own negatives also so the exclusive distribution you have complete hold on to your distribution so they say that i as a consumer when i am buying an adidas shoe i am not talking to the md of adidas i am not talking to uh, the advertising manager the campaign manager of adidas though you know, adidas might say that i have hired iams but i am never talking to these iams when i am actually dealing with the product of adidas so the sales person who is selling to me is a company to me that is a reflection of company to me so when you are into exclusive distribution you have you have prominently uh, prominently controlling the uh, interaction that is taking place between the retailer and uh, and then uh, you have this uh, uh, the retailer and the consumer so you are having a control uh, onto this and uh, so this is positive of exclusive and this is kind of you know a negative of exclusive a negative of exclusive is that you cannot reach to uh, the you know every possible uh, place with exclusive distribution because it would sky up your cost to the point you cannot deal with it financially no company has financial arms so strong that they can actually tackle the exclusive distribution for each every potential customers selective distribution positives are that you are reaching uh, to larger number of people uh, but then uh, you know you uh, actually are kind of compromising onto the interaction that might potentially take place between the consumers and the retailers so that is something that you can kind of you know talk of uh, the positives and negatives of selective distribution intensive distribution you have no control i'm sorry uh, you have no control on how a uh, man sitting into the uh, remotest part of the country would be dealing with your consumer when he's selling a lux shop so no control over it so this is intensive distribution that is taking place so shamil when you ask that uh, what is the example of selective distribution you can talk of any company who is actually selective in distributing themselves so all the companies who are giving these franchises uh, to reach uh, to increase their reach and uh, but yet uh, think of having some control over how the interaction between a consumer and a retailer would take place uh, they actually are trying to do the selective distribution so uh so the dominoes uh, maybe they are giving franchise to the people mrf and they are giving franchise to the to, to, to the people who are willing to invest something into mrf you can have an ex you can have a showroom of mrf but that is not company owned so you have uh, you as a uh, individual can reach to mrf and can satisfy their conditions and terms and then they will give you uh, the franchise and you can sell them so that is your selective distribution the company as an mrf as a company is selective in uh, giving the selling rights to someone uh, with the name of mrf so uh, the, com the consumer would look at it as if it is a uh, company showroom but then there is someone between these intermediaries who are into in, in between so that is how you can look at the selective distribution i hope it makes sense uh then uh, we have the uh, alternatives uh, and the evaluation of them uh, 
first thing that you can look at uh, when you have the various number of channels in between you can think of the lot size you can think of the service output uh, desired by the consumer you can think of um, the alternatives exclusive selective intensive then how do you kind of you know uh, look at and evaluate these uh, alternatives which one is good for me uh, is, I've already told to you that you have positives about uh, all the type of channels you have negative about all the type of channels so when you are going for positives you have also have to absorb the negatives of it but the one important thing that for which you have to talk of channel and its management would be uh, uh, would be uh, you know the examples uh, would be something to tell you that you have to save on to your cost uh, you have to manage your channels like this so when you are talking of save on to your cost then you talk of economic criteria so uh, um, you have other examples also Shamil uh, Bharti is coming for help Tata, Sampurna, McCain brands are available at selective stores so they are not uh, using uh, every you know channel to distribute these things so maybe that also helped okay so uh, the economic criteria to evaluate now this is a very uh, important curve in fact uh, that that speaks a very important thing about the channel management uh, because you know this side of the curve which is the x-axis you talk of cost per transaction uh, when you are uh, delivering the good using this channel and that is the value added for sale uh, every uh, the, the distribution uh, mechanism has its own positive so the positive could be that it is adding value to the people so for exclusive your company on people are talking to the consumer so they are adding a lot of value whereas um, Khokha Wala would not be adding that value when he's selling your product so how the value is added when uh, which channel for which channel you will have the highest value being added so you see the high value sits here and it is for the sales force so the sales force is something which would add the highest value uh, in terms of the interaction that taking place between the consumer and the retailer but boy uh, look at this the sales force is having the maximum cost per transaction also so uh, you cannot have uh, the sales force in place for selling every type of product that exists under the sun sales force when it is giving you more satisfaction but at the same time it is increasing the cost of the channel also so that that is why you do not recommend the sales force to, uh, for, for every type of product some products which for which the sales force would make more sense is wherein you need to give a lot of comprehension a lot of knowledge about the product so which means while selling a car you might need a sales force right so because uh, when you are investing 10 lakhs 20 lakhs you would like to know tons of things about the product and when that happens uh, you need a sales force helping you so when it is adding value then it is also increasing the cost of transaction so for volume goods sales force might not be a very good idea so um, look at this internet we have been talking about the internet and uh, this internet is actually uh, not adding any value but not uh, costing you much also while ago i gave this example of cars better to use sales force because you have to kind of you know uh, tell a lot of things to the consumers now then very interesting discussion that comes up i have had this uh, discussion with my students in past also can you think of uh, internet in times to come to be uh, shifting from here to this place uh, in other words what i am saying can internet add value uh, for the consumer also uh, so or we would be talking of internet as to be a dump medium which is not actually adding any value to it so uh, you use internet it is not costing you but it is almost also not adding value to it we have already talked about internet as to be something which uh, is not giving you satisfaction when we were talking of automation of services should we automate everything uh, maybe not because uh, this is not satisfying the customer so nothing can replace human interaction internet can you use internet in such a way that in, in, it increases the value added on when uh, selling is happening so this is something that we need to have a discussion on and i'm sure that uh, we can shift internet from here to here
not to the topmost of the value that we can potentially think of but at least it deserves a better place than where it is currently so internet can actually add value also when you are kind of you know selling to it then the other things which are telemarketing retail distributors valuated partners they are into in between so you kind of you know think of uh, which one to add into my channel uh, depending upon how much uh, value it is adding uh, to my entire channel thing so uh, that was the economic thing then the control thing uh, uh, control thing would mean that uh, you have how much you have control over your channels uh, while ago we were talking of an exclusive thing we have a lot of control over it uh, we might not have that control onto the intense thing adaptive means how agile your channel is to adopt the changes uh, you know whenever you need to bring some changes into the system how much uh, your channels are willing to absorb those changes so that is something that we talk of into uh, adaptive criteria so these things uh, actually are to be you know kind of taken care of then uh, we have uh, the members of channel and the selection uh, that we can potentially you know talk about it and when we can kind of you know talk about this uh, this is an hr thing so a lot of people uh, here would be of hr and you would have heard about all these things right you as a company can train and can motivate the channel members using the powers and these all are your powers as as a company right and these can actually decide you know, what and who to choose and who to not choose and how to influence people how to motivate the members of channels to perform better and uh, so the first thing is that as a as a as a, as a channel uh, or as a company you can exercise coercive power so coercive as a word it actually speaks of punishment it's a negative word if you go to dictionary so by virtue of the virtue of the decisions and negative sense that you can take against any channel member or channel partner when you are making him to motivate like that then you are exercising your coercive power reward power is the as the word itself tells you you can reward the people so the insurance industry would do it a lot those who sells the highest numbers of insurance policies they are given reward at the end of the year so i remember when i was in this company i had a friend of mine who was into bharti extra life insurance and he was given a europe tour uh, because uh, he actually has performed so well in the previous year uh, in in terms of giving the volume of business to the company so this is a reward power you can motivate them to do better legitimate power by virtue of the contract that you have signed in uh, you are deriving some power you can uh, you can tighten the members of your channel you can put them loose so that is something that you can think of in legitimate power expert power is when by virtue of your knowledge when you can influence uh, then you can talk of the expert power uh, uh, and the reference power is by virtue of the respect uh, uh, you can actually you know uh, motivate the people so there can be a lot of respected brands a lot of respected companies who can influence you as a distributor so uh, pepsodent so much known it has people come to you and ask for pepsodent you need not to sell them the product sells on its own so you as a retailer as a distributor would have a lot of respect for the actual as a company because uh, you, people are asking for it you know uh, so they have the respect in the sense that they have created their brand well into the market to that extent that you can actually think of it to be uh exercising that and channelizing and the, asking for this respect right so uh, th this is how you know we actually can think of uh, you know, choosing uh, uh, selecting the channel members and then training and motivating them and then generating the partnership between uh, all those members on those channels depending upon how many channels you have in between and then you can kind of you know evaluate the channel members in the sense that you can keep on uh, doing uh, that that is something that they call as the cycle audit cycling so you kind of you know keep on doing uh, and evaluating and looking at how your channel has been performing now uh, another thing which perhaps is, uh, uh, is is perhaps very important uh, and perhaps this is what is making a lot of difference uh, to the way uh, we would talk of uh, our channel management today 
uh, we have uh, something which is called as vertical marketing system when we talk of it in the context of marketing. Now, uh, just uh, I will hang on for a for a for two minute discussion onto this point because it is ideally important to talk on this. Uh, we have been discussing that uh, gone are the days when you would treat uh, your uh, your 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 retailing shop as to be an independent shop who is concerned about your own profit and you are not interested into uh, the effect that you as a retailer can have onto the parent company whose product you are selling now for example in productions uh, we talk of a concept called uh, bullwhip effect uh, bullwhip effect is uh, suppose uh, you have been ordering 100 units of uh, a product a uh, from your distributor but all of a sudden uh, you have this corona thing going on so you do not want to fall short of the stock so you say don't know what will happen tomorrow so why not to have uh, why not to take the control of the stocking in advance so when you were ordering only uh, 100 now you order thousands so because you are not sure of how will be the supply chain management in times to come so when you are only one retailer so you have uh, asked for say maybe the 10 times of what you would usually order so you might when you are doing that you are actually exercising independence into the channel management independence means uh, you are not considering that what impact can it potentially have onto the parent company. So you as a retailer doing this now for example forget this 900 units ordered more. We'll talk of say even 5 units, 10 units, 20, 25 units being ordered more by one retailer. So if every retailer starts doing this what kind, kind of impact would it have onto the parent company. So when this numbers would add up it would become a vehement number to the, to the, to the parent company. And that uh, that happens when you as a manufacturer do not have control over to your uh, distributors, to your uh, retailers because they are acting independently. They are not considerate about what would eventually happen. So bullwhip is if you would throw a stone into still water where the stone is touching and kissing the surface of the water, you will see some ripple effect takes place. So the ripple effect means suppose uh, this is uh, the place where the stone has come you will see the ripple started generating right so they, they, you will see this thing uh, happening so the ripples would keep moving outwards so as you move outward the diameter of the ripples increases so this is something that you call as a bullwhip effect so you uh, are sitting here so you say I have ordered only 25 more it doesn't create much of much of the impact for me but then the other peoples are also doing this so you are sitting here as parent company so you are pc so you are coming here so for you it is this circle uh, can you imagine what it is doing so this is something that happens when you do not treat uh, your uh, your your retailers uh, uh, or uh, you as a retailer do not treat your parent company as to be part of a single system right so this is a bigger issue in uh, the overall supply chain management uh, this bull whipping is uh, amazing uh, you just type onto the google and you just read the effect of the ripple effects that uh, the change in ordering at the level of a retailer or a distributor can do to the parent company uh, you would be amazed by looking at the effect that it would generate uh, so, uh, to get rid of all these things, we can actually talk of something called as a vertical marketing system. So, vertical marketing system would mean that uh, you are a retailer, uh, here is the uh, consumer, here is the distributor and here is the company C. So, we are not treating this as independent of this and independent of this, wherein we are bringing all of them together. And we call it as a system and we treat this as to be a company taking all of them together uh, this is the concept and that in, if we are practicing this we can uh, eventually talk of uh, vertical marketing system wherein the, 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 the retailer the distributors are coming together and they are uh, uh, considered about the other things also so when we were talking of you know everything is related when we were talking of uh, a while ago that the functions of a retailers one function could be 
the risk uh, sharing. So the risk sharing happens when you treat all of them as one system. So when you are treating them as independent, a retailer is not sharing the risk of falling out of stock. See, you are getting margin when you are selling a unit. Uh, but when you are not able to sell, this company is also losing a customer. Are you getting the point? So uh, it is not only you who are losing your consumer, but the company is also falling short of their customer base. If if you as a retailer are not having a stock which could potentially be given to the consumer, so when you are falling short, it is a problem to the company also. So why not you and uh, the company work together? Why not you become one system and we can talk of this vertical marketing system? So when you treat all of them together as to be one system, so you do not concentrate on the only your profits. You talk of uh, you know the other things also in the sense that uh, I have to be considerate about how uh, you know uh, you uh, as a company is going to have influence uh, onto your retailer and how retailer as a member into your entire channel management can have an impact onto you as a company. So when this happens you treat of uh, either uh, coming down uh, as a company or coming up as a company. So coming down as a company would mean, so if you are Tata, you are taking uh, over a steel plant. So uh, you can also talk on top of like that. So you are taking over the steel plant. So steel plant is now yours. So then you have uh, a retailer who is selling your steel, but then you actually uh, take over this retailer also. So you are increasing your thing and you are making them part of your system. One way of doing it is this. Another way of it is to make them, to uh, take them along and to uh, ask them to behave as a system rather than independent units. Now for example, just to put this in perspective, Jeep, uh, when they are selling their successful cars elsewhere into the western countries, they have been able to bring the same car in India at a considerable lower price range. And they have been able to do that because they have got into touch with their suppliers, with their uh, channel members, right at the time of the designing. So uh, when uh, they are coming into India, so they would uh, might get in touch with the supplier and they would ask them that I would need say this crankshaft. Uh, so uh, this is uh, want to please make it to me. So the supplier says that if I need to customize the shafts like this, then it would escalate the price because I've been supplying to Maruti. So I have to get a new die in place. I have to get the new system in place. So it would escalate the price. So the Jeep would say, Ki, no, 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 don't do this, please. I would try to change my design accordingly. Uh, you tell me what type of thing you can supply so that it doesn't cost me much. So you are actually taking uh, the supplier uh, as to be uh, as to be uh, as to be an important entity into the entire management of your channel, and hence you are actually kind of you know going on and saving a lot of cost around it, and you can produce a product which can actually be uh, a better product, but at the same time costing you less to generate and to produce it. So the other side of it, rather than buying the lower and the upper thing, you can also talk of having a type of control over your retailers and the distributors, right? So these controls can also be uh, considered as to be part of your vertical uh, marketing system. So one of uh, that could be your corporate VMS, which is corporate uh, vertical marketing system. Uh, wherein uh, the production and uh, the consumption uh, you as a company you as a corporate leader has control over you know all of uh, all of them administered vms is because of the sheer uh, uh, size uh, and the sheer power that you are uh, exercising into the system the retailers uh, actually look at you when they are taking any decision on their own to their independence because they are fear of losing you as a company and then uh, you are that way exercising a little bit of control on to these retailers and then you cohesively work as a system. Contractual VMS would mean when you are kind of uh, working together as part of a contract that you are signed across with each other so we will not work in independence but we will work together with each other so this is how you know we kind of talk of vertical marketing system a very important concept into the channel management and then we have this horizontal marketing system so as vertical marketing system speaks about the vertically taking the system together so horizontally as the word itself suggests it is considering 
uh, at the same level uh, the people when they come together to use their channel management that is something that you can call as the horizontal marketing system so we will talk of this also so the hybrid marketing system is kind of a combination of the vertical thing and the horizontal thing taken together so what we are talking about is this a conventional marketing channel would have a manufacturer a wholesaler a retailer and a consumer uh, as to be the independent entities but the vertical marketing channel treat all of them as part of one system you see that box has come up now so this box says uh, manufacturer is not different from the wholesaler and the retailer is not different from the wholesaler they all have to work together uh, and they all are to be you know kind of part of one kitty and that is your vertical marketing system and they all then supply it to the consumer so this is uh, you know the idea uh, of vertical marketing channel now look at this horizontal marketing thing a while ago you we were talking about uh, uh, that uh, at the same level when uh, two people are coming together uh, two companies are coming together to leverage each other's channel so that is something that you can call as to be horizontal marketing system so uh, look at this example lipton uh, uh, lipton has uh, come up with their ice tea uh, and uh, when they have come up with their ice tea they have uh, an option either to have their own exclusive distribution or to have the selective distribution or to have the intensive distribution to take place but then how would you do that uh, you are into a category maybe say beverages or the juice category uh then uh, why don't you use a channel which is already in place and why don't you uh, come together with someone who is already uh, well known as far as their distribution is concerned so in that case you can actually talk of a horizontal marketing system so you would see this thing happening somewhere in 2005 in india where in the pepsi and lipton uh, they are coming together to offer iced tea in india right so lipton would be maybe using the channel of pepsi uh, and uh, where you find pepsi you might also find the lipton ice tea so uh, this is uh, something which is written here also hindustan unilever also using pepsi's bottle bottling facility to roll out lipton it in coca cola type bottles so use the channels use their all those things together and when you do that you are talking of horizontal marketing system in place so doing that both of them are at kind of you know uh, into 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 a mechanism wherein they actually are uh, helping each other right so taking it to global the same thing uh, talking of horizontal marketing system uh, then we have this bank assurance thing also if you have heard about this term when uh, insurance company sells uh, through uh, banks this is called as bank assurance uh is what written here also bank assurance means selling insurance products through banks so now this insurance companies are using banks right so channels being used horizontal channel uh, so you are not going up and down but you are using the already system in place right so this is something that you talk of horizontal marketing system now with that the last thing uh, the channel conflict uh, you can have uh, you can talk of three type of conflicts horizontal conflict vertical conflict and multi channel conflict so horizontal conflict uh, would be when you have the conflict the word itself tells you it is an english word when you have some kind of aberrations in between the two parties who are working into the same type of thing that is something that can be termed as conflict horizontal conflict means uh, when you have the conflict between the members of the channels so the pepsi and the lipton if they have any conflict that can be termed as a horizontal conflict vertical conflict is when you have the conflict between a wholesaler and a retailer that is vertical conflict multi channel conflict is everything taken together kind of a thing so that is more severe there can be many causes of conflict now this is what is written in books but uh, you can imagine by your mind that there can be n number of reasons because of which we can potentially talk of the conflict arising between the members of the channels you can talk of goal incompatibility so the people the various members of the channels do not know what are their goals uh, they are not capable enough to fulfill those goals because of that they can have the conflicts they do not know what their goals are uh, they have the difference in perception they do not think in the same line and uh, they all uh, actually have are dependent upon the manufacturer so they do not treat the system as a whole and they would like to 
draw the maximum out of the manufacturer without thinking of each other so that can cause the conflict how can you handle it uh, you can um, these are all the hr things you would have done it multiple times in your hr courses uh, you can send the person from each side that is something that is termed as a diplomacy uh, so the two people coming from this coming from the two sides uh, they kind of sorting things together and that is something that you called as a diplomacy being used to solve the general conflict mediation uh, you do not make sense when the two people are coming together from each other you are using a neutral third person uh, they are kind of you know solving the things for you they are kind of doing some uh, the, 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 the removal of abrasions between the two parties that is something that is called as a mediation employees exchange uh, the both parties where the both members where the conflict is there they send their employees to each other to understand the stance to understand the conditions to understand the context of each other so the idea and the logic and the ideology behind this type of conflict management is to let the know let the people know let the other sides people know that what uh, situation that we are going through and in that situation maybe we have to take some, some decisions and then strategic justifications strategic justifications would mean that if you are into something suppose you come into a joint venture you, if, if, if you are into the horizontal say management horizontal channel management thing uh, you give a justification that in the, if you do not do that then you are into trouble strategically dual compensation when they both are you know uh, given compensation for the conflict and they both kind of you know settle down with each other so uh, this is uh, uh, the running uh, uh, discussion onto uh, the channel as i have been telling you that uh, there can be some things which we uh, uh, need to discuss uh, in person and we can do that uh, once you are here but uh, i thought that this is enough to uh, give you a jump start uh, to not leave your books when uh, covid is holding us back so i think uh, this is uh, what we can talk of the channel and its management if you have any questions on to this uh, then we can take up the questions and if there is someone uh, into the audience uh, we can kind of you know uh, also expect them to answer the questions i'm extremely happy that uh, the data is telling me that we have somewhere around 37 to 38 people attending today's talk which is uh, telling me the interest uh, that you are having the concurrent views have reached to that uh, point which is a very very wonderful thing and uh, this is how uh, i think we can make sense and we can actually utilize this time so if you have any questions then you can let me know we can take up those questions and uh, um, then i will let you know uh, the next time we will be again sitting together and we will be kind of you know talking this if you have any questions then please let me know these questions i am uh, onto uh, uh, onto the chat box i am having my eyes onto the chat box so ritesh chaudhary thanks sir thank you so much ritesh you have been a wonderful audience thank you so much and you can uh, you have my email id you can write in if you have something in specific uh, to ask which you are not asking now and uh, maybe we can take it up uh, next time when we will sit right any questions and in between if someone else has come uh, if if i can take those people in so uh, who else has come later on uh, i i will i will take care of this uh, whosoever was here i have the entire record with me uh, so uh, nitesh and sandeep uh, horizontal and vertical marketing system that is what they are asking uh, so Nitesh and Sandeep, uh, vertical and horizontal system confusion, uh, do, do not be confused in this. You just uh, look at it like this. Uh, this is where you are sitting. This is M, this is manufacturer, right? Uh, this is a dot. Uh, when you as a manufacturer has to uh, supply the goods to a consumer using a retailer, uh, but at the same time, uh, um, you also have to uh, kind of, you know, uh, take the raw material from someone uh, who is maybe your supplier, right? So now the levels are different. 
so you are sitting at this level as a manufacturer and the supplier is sitting at a lower level and the consumer is sitting at the upper level so the the flow of things are like this right this is how the flow of things works like this so uh, when you are saying that uh, i would make this supplier part of my system like this this is vms right this is vms uh, when you say ki retailer i will take uh, as part of my system this is also vms you make this entire system this is vms right so this is your vms thing horizontal thing is uh, suppose you have this retailers so there can be other retailers also r1 you have r2 you have r3 uh, lot of people so you are taking help of all those then uh, you talk of this horizontal marketing system and but i am in middle of a class ऑनलाइन क्लास चल रही है सीधा चलेगा बिल्कुल सीधा मैं तो डाल लगा है पति हूं अभी नहीं है बेटा वहां कुछ भी नहीं है मैं घर पे मैं अभी नहीं है मैं जाकर आया हूं आप जाता आप जाते हैं नहीं ओके सो दिस इज दिस इज योर हॉरिजॉन्टल मार्केटिंग सिस्टम ओके सो दिस इज व्हाट द थिंग इज ओके सो डोंट बी कंफ्यूज्ड बिटवीन दीस टू थिंग्स टेकिंग टुगेदर ओके so divya says uh, sir once again uh, strategic justification okay uh, so strategic justification is see uh, many times divya what happens uh, you become uh, you become a part of a system because of some strategic alliance also at times now for example if you have heard about that ford and mahindra are coming together right uh ford and mahindra are coming together maybe uh, you might see that a while ago i was talking to you that the ford is not having uh is not having you know the reach to the market as mahindra is having so you might find that ford is starting using the channel of mahindra because mahindra is having a wider reach uh, to sell their cars also so this is kind of you know a strategic uh, thing that is happening uh so then uh, imagine imagine that uh, you have a ford uh, franchisee you have taken ford franchise suppose let's talk of it in sariwari so riwari already had a ford agency but hypothetically let us talk of this uh then uh, riwari also has say mahindra showroom so so if this thing comes into play so maybe the ford vehicle is available in mahindra showroom also and maybe hypothetically i am just trying to explain a concept to you and it is available in ford showroom also so then you have invested say 50 lakhs in taking this franchise of ford you are now coming to know that someone has brought a ford car from the mahindra showroom so what for i have paid the money uh, I, because for every car sold you are getting uh, you know your uh, you know, your this thing Uh, which is you can call it as to be your uh, margin or as to be your uh, overheads or whatever whatever so that, that when this happens so you as a company can say strategically this uh, you know this is a strategic alliance and out of this strategic alliance we have to uh, you know do something like this i give you one more example reebok uh, as a company when this dot com boom happened in 2000 uh this uh, reebok company has started selling their shoes using online mechanisms so it so happened that suppose i have taken the reebok franchisee i have paid them whatever amount of money that they would ask for but then uh, someone came to my shop he is just my neighbor and then this neighbor says oh look i have purchased this uh, reebok shoes how is it looking then all of a sudden my eyebrows raised and i asked him oh where from you have purchased these shoes and he said i have ordered them online and then i my face got pale and i just asked them why on earth then i am having this franchise of reebok right uh, he is purchasing it online so what is the point i approach to the reebok and i say hey, no you cannot do this and that then this is a conflict i might tell them that uh, you know uh, if to, so in those days because it was starting of the dot com boom uh, this was uh, this has gone into the history that uh, 
the Reebok has stopped making the online sales at that time because there were a lot of retailers, a lot of franchisee people who were getting annoyed out of all those things because they were losing their business. But if today you say, now suppose you want to take franchisee of Reebok and if today you say, I would not allow Reebok to sell online, would it work? It will not work. Right. So you have to take that into account. So you can can have a conflict in your mind that uh, there are a lot of people. Now, suppose the, the I was giving you a while ago the example of this Ford also selling online cars. Uh, first hundred EcoSports they have sold online. Now, suppose in Rivari, five of the people would have purchased this Ford EcoSport online. Then the Ford franchisee people who have taken this Ford franchisee, they would have reached to the Ford and said, Ki, why are you selling online? I, I am there. I have invested so much. I have the people in place. So then they would reply that, no, this is the strategically that we are trying to, you know, doing it. So when you would have signed the papers while taking franchises, so all those things are to be taken care of. These are the terms and conditions, you know. So that is how you give the strategic, uh, you know, uh, uh, explanation, strategic justification to all that. And I hope that is uh, something that can make sense to you, right? So uh, mm, I think uh, we are now good and we can, uh, uh, if there are some other questions, we can take those questions, right? Uh, otherwise, I think we have.